There are three familiar forms of electric light. Incandescent light bulb, fluorescent lights, and LEDs, or light-emitting diodes. But how do they each work, and why are LEDs so much more efficient than traditional incandescent light bulbs? Incandescent lights are the original form of electric light, first created by Joseph Swan. The general principle is that passing electric current along a filament of some kind, originally this was carbonised paper, the most common material now is tungsten. As electricity passes along a thin wire, the wire heats up, and due to the properties of tungsten, it glows white hot, but it doesn't actually melt. This lack of melting means that the filament can last for thousands of hours before failing. However, tungsten will normally burn at these temperatures. So, to prevent this, the filament is sealed inside a bulb with no oxygen present. Originally, this created a vacuum in the bulb. This caused the tungsten filament to evaporate and so again rapidly fail. So, commonly now, the bulb is filled with inert gases. These bulbs are relatively cheap and easy to mass produce, and so rapidly became the standard method for producing electric light. However, because the electricity is used to heat the filament, most of the energy and power used in the light bulb is converted to heat rather than light, meaning that as a method of producing light, they're very inefficient, and that led to another form of lighting, the fluorescent light bulb. In terms of complexity, the fluorescent light bulb is far more complicated and elaborate than the incandescent light bulb, and so comparatively more expensive to produce. These costs can be reduced slightly by mass production, but the real advantage comes in being far more energy efficient. Parts of the bulb resemble that of the fluorescent light bulb. Again, the tube is filled with an inert gas, normally argon. Electricity is passed through one end of the bulb passing along something which looks a bit like a filament. In this case, it's actually an electrode. When a charge is applied to the electrodes, electrons flood off one end of the electrode, migrate through the inert gas until they reach the other electrode at the far end of the bulb, completing the circuit. However, near the initial electrode is a very tiny amount of mercury. The energy in the tube converts some of the mercury from liquid into a gas. This then is excited by the electrons in the tube and they return to an unexcited state, they release ultraviolet light. This ultraviolet light is then captured by the phosphor powder coating of the bulb which then produces visible light. This means that a great deal of the energy is actually converted into visible light. But they may take a second or two to warm up before producing a normal light. The presence of mercury in the light does present slight environmental problems, however the amount is so small that a single bulb doesn't actually represent that much of a threat, but dropping a whole box of them certainly might be hazardous. Since a lot of mercury is actually released into the atmosphere when you actually burn coal as a fossil fuel for producing energy, the reduction in energy use by these kinds of bulbs actually means that there's actually less mercury in the environment as a result of using fluorescent lights. That leaves us with LEDs, which are used in anything from remote controls to traffic lights. The core of the LED is a semiconductor. And due to the arrangements of the elements in the semiconductor, if it has three electrons with it, it's negatively charged, known as an n-type. If it's need for electrons, it's positively charged, or a p-type. When connected to a power source, electrons flow in one direction. As electrons move from one substance to another, then they emit a photon of light, generally in the infrared part of the spectrum. Semiconductors is generally contained within a plastic shell, both to protect the fragile elements and electronics within the substance, also so that a phosphor coating can be applied to convert the light into visible parts of the spectrum for practical illumination. This form of construction makes the LEDs both very efficient and long-lasting, as almost no energy is converted into heat, and almost all the electricity is going into producing the light it has no filament or mercury to burn or deplete, making light an illuminating topic.